Starting a new React Native project in 2026, you've probably noticed something. There are even more libraries than last year, and somehow picking the right stack got even harder. So in this video, I'm giving you one opinionated modern tech stack that you can use to confidently build a great app without wasting days comparing five state libraries or watching infinite GitHub issues. What's up React Native friends, Simon from galaxies.dev here. React Native in 2026 is in the best place it's ever been. Faster builds, better performance, Expo Router is now the default for most teams and the tooling ecosystem is finally reaching maturity. We might even witness React Native 1.0 this year, but picking your tech stack? still overwhelming. So today I'll walk you through the exact setup I recommend for your developer environment, local data and state, navigation and UI foundations, must have packages, preferred backend options and the services that make shipping dramatically easier. This is the stack I would give to my students, my clients and honestly to myself if I would start a blank new app this week. And if you want to go deeper and build a real app from scratch, check out the Zero to Hero mission on galaxies.dev. It's the most most practical way to learn React Native in 2026 and actually ship your own app. Alright, now let's start with the core for new projects. Let's start with the basics because they are actually very very clear for most applications. If you're starting a new React Native application in 2026, you want to use Expo as your framework and your command would be something like this, npx create Expo app latest. That will give you a React Native application that's using Expo. If you have any questions about Expo, about ejecting from Expo or anything related to that, it's just not true anymore. It hasn't been true over the last two years and usually what you find on Reddit and other internet places is outdated. So Expo is the recommended framework for React Native, it's not limiting you to anything at any time. You can just drop down into a native project and there are only benefits to using Expo. There may be like 2% of applications that have very specific requirements that might for whatever reason not fit Expo, but in every other case, just start with Expo. Of course, you want to use TypeScript, no question about that anymore. And you also want to use the Expo router usually because that gives you URL based routing, file based routing, like you probably used if you're coming from the web, it has gotten to a very great maturity level and Expo Router just gives you really great uh, functionalities in terms of displaying pages, API routes, RSC, so many things. You can watch a couple of other videos on this channel about it. On top of that, just to cover the basics, I highly recommend an IDE that has AI capabilities. I personally use Cursor as my editor of choice. You can use VS Code with Copilot enabled. You can use Windsurf, Anti-Gravity. I don't care as long as you use AI functionality because it's 2026 and you really want to get this chat. You want to get fixing four bucks quickly. You want to ask questions about your repositories and you need to get finally, if you haven't done it, in the flow of using AI for your React Native apps as well. In most applications, you want to store some local data and honestly there are just like two or three options that you should consider if you want to store data in your application locally without a server. So the first one that I always rely on is Expo SQLite. Every application has a SQLite database and with Expo SQLite you have a plugin that allows you to easily work with the SQLite database. Now with Expo SQLite alone what you would have to do is actually write a bunch of SQL statements to directly insert data into your database. Maybe that is you or maybe that's not your cup of tea. And if you're like me, you probably prefer an ORM that makes things a lot easier. In my case, what I always recommend and use is Drizzle. Drizzle is really amazing. You can also use something like Prisma, but I usually work more with Drizzle in the past. Drizzle basically gives you the uh, ability to write your schema in a TypeScript file and from that TypeScript file you can then later generate SQLs. All of this with the Drizzle CLI. It has a great integration with Expo SQLite. They actually have a complete documentation about this and they also have something called Drizzle Studio which makes it really easy to debug the SQLite database of your application in React Native apps. On top of those two things you sometimes want to store just like the user has seen the intro or the user has selected a specific theme. For those cases I always rely on React Native MMKV. React Native MMKV by Microsavi is the fastest key value storage. Uh, it's 30x faster than async storage. So you really 
shouldn't use async storage anymore, just use this. Yes, this library will not work with Expo Go in case you have questions, but it's definitely worth the trade-off. It comes with great performance, the ease of use is amazing, it has hooks and it has also integrations to other state libraries that I will recommend later. Besides handling structured data in your application, you sometimes also want to have some state in your app. And there are actually three things that I will recommend when you start a new React Native app. The first thing might surprise you because you can actually just use the context API from React and get away with it. I mean, honestly, it's good. I'm using it all the time as well. It's not like this horrible thing that will automatically kill your performance. So for example, the theme context or anything like that, which requires your app to re-render a bunch of components, it's okay to use the context API. So I would just give it a shot and see how far you can get with this in your application. That's in general a good rule of thumb. Just use the basics and then once you notice that something isn't behaving good, you might be good for an upgrade. Now, in terms of an update that's more reliable, I would always recommend Zustand as your library. Now, we could have a huge video about state libraries in React in general, the atomic ones like Zustand, Yotai or the bigger ones. Honestly, this is an opinionated video, so I'll just say use Zustand and I'm pretty sure you're gonna be happy with what you get because it's really that easy to use and it also nicely integrates with MMKV that we've seen before, which helps you to persist your store locally. If we're talking about state, there's also a second thing we need to take care of. So Zustand and Contacts is like our local app state, but then we're also talking about the state of our HTTP calls of server state. For that, I would 100% of the time recommend 10-stack query. With 10-stack query, you wrap your app in this query client provider, you have your queries mapped out by a query key with a query function, everything is just so, uh, I just, I can't describe it. It just feels so good, it looks so good, it is structured, it is reliable, it is safe, you get tons of features from 10-stack query. So in pretty much every serious application that I start where I know I'm gonna make HTTP calls, I instantly install 10-stack query as one of the first actions. In my last tech stack recommendation, I actually had a very long list of must-have packages. This year, I'm boiling it down to four things that I recommend you install in your application. First of all, you want a better list. The best one out there is usually flash list, although you might also, some people argue legend list, but you can't go wrong with flash list. It is such an improvement over the built-in scroll view in general and as well flat list that you just want to rely on this if you want better performance in your application. It has been rewritten completely in 2025 for even better performance, so you should opt into this very quickly. Pretty much all applications that I now also need to handle some form data, whether it is just like your login form or anything else inside the application to capture data and you want to use react hook form in combination with Zot. That gives you type safety as well as cool functionalities for your form like error handling and easy state management for your form so you don't need to do all of that with your state. The other two must-have packages are for Expo users always installed in your initial application and they are React Native Reanimated as well as the React Native Gesture Handler. These two are essential for building React Native applications. With a gesture handler, you can control for different events, double taps, long press, anything you can do with your finger on the screen. And with Reanimated, you can animate your app in a safe way, actually now also using CSS animations to still get the native benefits of running your animations on the UI thread. And they kind of go hand in hand, so whenever you do something with a gesture handler, you also usually want to update your AI, UI with reanimated they have nice synergies with the worklets and everything that's going on so these are the absolute must-have packages there are a few services that you can use that make building your app a whole lot easier one of them is definitely expo application services or short EAS I use this hands down for all my projects so as a beginner, it can be sometimes a bit hard to distinguish what is Expo, what is EAS. EAS is sort of like the paid services of Expo. You can build your application in the cloud with EAS build. Um, you have EAS submit, which can automatically submit the build you have made in the cloud. There is EAS updates, so you can push out live updates to your application. Uh, and there's so much more, EAS hosting and a bunch of other things that just make your life as an app developer so much easier. So if you're building an app, go with EAS. It just makes 
makes building and getting your app to the Play Store or to the App Store so much easier. In terms of other services that I rely on, I absolutely love Clerk for user authentication in my application. Last year they've been working on new components for React Native, so the integration with React Native is in 2026 even better. So if you need anything regarding to user management and authentication, Clerk is your best friend. Now, on top of that, if you're building any kind of serious application, you want to install Sentry right in the beginning. With Sentry, you have application monitoring, but by now, this goes far beyond just error tracking and reporting. There's so much more to Sentry at this point. You can see it in most of the clone videos. Uh, they got like PR reviews. There are uh, the session replays, which capture your screen automatically. They have a local tool. There's so much more uh, that we can't just wrap it up all, but I promise you, if you're building a real application for real users, you want to install Sentry. If you also want to monetize your app, which most likely happens in many applications, I always rely on RevenueCat. RevenueCat has the best implementation for cross-platform, in-app purchases, subscriptions, whatever you can find. They have a nice editor so you can easily build paywalls in your application. They now also have virtual currency support. And every time I check RevenueCat, there's a new feature that makes creating these products so much easier, like automatically editing the products in uh, App Store Connect or helping you to set up the JSON service account in your Google Play console. Two other things I would also recommend. The first one is CodeRabbit. You can see me using CodeRabbit in the previous Vault clone that I did where I did this at the end of every chapter. With CodeRabbit you can have AI reviews and you can have really epic code reviews. This is especially interesting if you're, int uh, if you're working alone. I do this many times. So I work in a branch, I do a PR and CodeRabbit will go through everything that I did in there, it will summarize it and then it will also point out areas that are a bit weak and that could be improved. It is such an improvement for the quality of your code. Finally, if you want to track your users, if you want to have some uh, insights, I usually rely on Postdoc. Now, this doesn't really look like a website, but they're kind of very creative with, <laughs> with their styling. Uh, Postdoc has like a suite of tools from also session replay to web analytics, product analytics, uh, feature flex surveys, uh, drill down into all the different functionalities. And the cool thing is this also works pretty nicely with React Native and makes your life a lot easier. Touching the topic of backends is in general a problem because everyone's using something else, everyone has a server or a legacy backend and it's really hard to make any recommendation. However, this is an opinionated video so I will give you my opinion. I absolutely love working with Superbase. I use Superbase for galaxies.dev as the backend. I've been using Superbase since the first day and just every year it keeps getting better. Superbase is a Postgres development platform by now. You really get everything that you need out of Superbase that you in the past probably also got from Firebase, but Superbase uses a relational database instead. If I want something different that's not a SQL database, I would currently go for Instant. They actually also have a dark mode, I just can't see it here. Um, so Instant is pretty much Firebase in a better way in 2026. I did one video with them earlier this year, uh, or maybe it's coming, actually it was last year already, and it blew me away how well it works. Since then I've used Instant for my own application and you just get to give it a try. It is so easy and what you get just works so great, both on the client side as well as on the server and in terms of the tooling. So if you want to be early with a tool that's gonna be big over the next couple of years, you should probably check out Instant. DB. And finally, if you don't need a full Superbase SQL backend and you also think Instant is maybe too much, you could probably also just get away with Expo API Routes. API Routes help you to put uh, secret information on the server side. So you can deploy your API Routes on a server, you can use EIS hosting for that if you want to, and these routes live inside of your React Native project. For example, you want to talk to OpenAI, but you don't want to expose the secret key in your front end. You can keep this in an environment file. You can use it safely in an API route and therefore you probably don't even need a server or backend at all in the end. Last but not least, let's talk about UI and components. You of course want to style your application in the best and easiest possible way. And there are tons of great libraries out there. However, let's take a very simple approach and you will quickly find the right uh, tool or library for your application, I promise. So actually, 
If I would get started, I would just use Stylesheet for my application. The basics of React Native, still a great choice. Uh, all AI tools know about this and they will spit out really great styling. This is for all applications that are just focused on iOS and Android that don't need anything fancy and you're fine with what Stylesheet has to offer. Now, if your application requires a bit more, then I would go for UniStyles. UniStyles is like Stylesheet on steroids. Um, you can pretty much replace the style sheet create with UniStyles and just have additional functionality on top. Uh, we can't go through everything that UniStyles has to offer here, but you got breakpoints, you got variants, you got really great performance that is very, very, a very tiny overhead over Stylesheet API. So you get a lot and you don't lose much by using it. So if Stylesheet is not enough for your application, then the next step would be UniStyles. Now, if you're coming from the web, you probably used Tailwind and you might like it or not. If you come from the web and you like Tailwind, then you wouldn't use UniWind in your project instead of one of the previous ones. With UniWind, you have the fa fastest Tailwind bindings for React Native. I gave this a try last year. The setup is easy, it works reliable, you can use CSS variables and themes, there are hooks and the API is cool and it just gets the job done. Again, with just a tiny overhead now over UniStyles. So UniWin is actually from the same creator as UniStyles. So we have basic style sheet, a bit more UniStyles. If you want web-like styling, use UniWind. And finally, if you want something that is a bit more native, you wanna look into Expo UI. With Expo UI, what Expo is doing here is they're pretty much wrapping the native Swift UI and Jetpack components and allowing you to use them through the Expo UI package. There's not everything in here yet, but there are already a variety of components from both Swift UI and Jetpack Compose that you can use directly in your React Native application, and that will give your app absolutely native feeling. Not that React Native isn't already native, but by directly using these Swift UI components, you get sometimes even a great performance improvement in your application. So this is this year my style recommendation. Just take a rational approach to this. Don't always try the latest and shiniest new package out there. You can just start with style sheet. You can upgrade to something more if you need more. You can opt into something that allows you to use Tailwind and you can also get native performance or native components in your React Native application through Expo UI. And I think that should cover every need for a great React Native app. All right, that was a lot of tools, but hopefully this gave you a clear and opinionated roadmap for building great React Native apps in 2026. The ecosystem is more stable than ever and honestly, that's a very good sign. We finally have a set of packages and services that you can rely on without constantly switching to the next new thing. If you have a favorite library I missed, drop it in the comments. I love discovering new tools from you all. And if you want to go beyond watching videos and actually build and ship your own React Native apps in 2026, check out the Zero to Hero mission on galaxies.dev. It's part of the lifetime access to galaxies and it walks you through all the steps from setting up your expo project to finally going to the app stores. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. So until then, happy coding, Simon.